It's Christina Stout with a new beginning. Y'all hear my phone cutting up in the background? Ain't that something? Wait till I start talking to want to start cutting up. All right, y'all. So tonight we are in the Midnight Love Garden, and it is a safe place where you can pray, you can worship, you can love, you can feel the love, and you can allow the Holy Spirit to take over, take over, just have its way. And, you know, sometimes I be done read one thing out from the program, and then the Spirit will lead me to go another way. And so, y'all, I, I'd rather be obedient, <laughs> be obedient to the Spirit and what God is saying in the hour. Amen. And one thing I will say is that when we are absent from the body, that is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And so I want to encourage Dominique's family, Dominique Wright's family, to still don't give up. Don't give up. It's just a new beginning. Dominique has started his new beginning. And, you know, I was reading on their page where they were talking about he, his school stuff. He had stuff planned for school and all that. And it's very sad that now he won't get the chance to live it here, live it out here in the earthly realm, but he will in the spiritual. Amen. All right. So we're talking about missing children in the Amber Alert. By the way, did you know that there was actually other names for the Amber Alert? For the Amber Alert, before it was actually the Amber Alert, there was other names that they was calling this alert for emergency child abduction. They were calling it, um, uh, I don't even have my page pulled up. It was so many names. Oh, God. So it was so many names. And if you want to find out more of that about that, all you got to do is go to Amber, Amber <laughs> excuse me, AmberAlert.org on the website, and they have all that information for you. Okay, so Missing Children, um, we are talking about the National Center for Missing Children and Exploited Children. This is actually where they had took the case of Dominique Wright, um, and they had his picture and all up. I was just looking through all the pictures, and I was like, oh, my God, y'all North Carolina has a lot of missing people. And as I was looking at these pictures, they were of all ages. They weren't just children. They were actually older people, too. I mean, people up in their 60s and 70s that have been missing for some time. So it's very important that we get this information out. And, you know, I'm one who believes in putting out a real word for right now in the season that we are in. We need to be able to understand these things. So this is what it says whenever you go to the missingkids.org 
and that is actually the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. You can always go on there and see the pictures just in case you may run into one of these children. You never know. They may be with someone or they just might be out and about. You know, they may be living underneath a new identity. Just in case if you run into the elderly that's on these pictures, you know, just go and look and see what's out there, y'all. Okay, so it says when a child goes missing, the National Center for Mission and Exploited Children is ready to assist families and law enforcement agencies 24 hours a day. Each case brings its own set of unique challenges and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is prepared to help meet those challenges. Case management teams work each case on an individual basis by providing coordinated support and access to analytical and technological resources. It is also prepared to assist in all missing child cases, even when a child has been missing for a long period of time, was abducted internationally by a parent, or has special needs. Um, National Children, um, let me see, National Center for Children and Missing Exploited Children works closely with more than 270 corporate photo partners with, I mean, who this missing night disseminate photos of missing children to millions of homes across the United States every day. It is able to assist in the most serious child abduction cases by sending specially trained retired law enforcement professionals to provide support and technical assistance to local law enforcement agencies. No missing child is ever forgotten, no matter how long they have been missing through the biometrics team coordinates the collection of DNA, dental records, and other unique identifiers from family members to search for potential matches, even for long-term cases. The case analyst unit provides direct analytical support to law enforcement for missing and unidentified deceased child cases. Every day works to find, every day they work to find missing children every night then with their family. So how many children, how many missing children are there? The missing children issue is complex and multifaceted. Children may become missing due to abduction by non-family members or abduction by family members. Children may become missing as a result of running away from home. Children may also become missing involuntarily for reasons other than abduction, such as becoming lost, injured, or under other circumstances. The FBI maintains comprehensive statistics regarding the number of children and adults entered by law enforcement agencies into the National Crime Information Center missing persons file each year. In 2014, there were 466,949 entries made by law enforcement for those younger than 18. Hold up. Let me stop right there, y'all. Did you hear that? 466,949 children are missing. And they're under the age of 18. So that lets you know that we have a problem out here. And it's going to take all of us to work together to help keep you keep each other's children safe, to correct each other's children out of love, not to run our children away or make them feel bad or anything, but to be there for them. These children are our future. And at this rate, 466,000 is too many. One is too many. And so my heart goes out to all these families that are suffering. And, you, you know, we, we don't know because... When I found that people are bad about not supporting things that are not, not directly related to them. I mean, that's, that's with anything. If it's not directly related to them, they don't want to support it. And I'm like, you know, 
not that it will happen, but we need to all be aware just in case. We need to be aware. We all, you know, the Bible says, says, stay sober minded and vigilant. And, and it also says that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. If we do not get out here and study and learn what's going on in our world, then we will become ignorant of those devices. Um, those that are stubborn or just hateful for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's a shame that they, those are usually the ones who will not come in on something until it happens within their family. So I'm asking all of you tonight to please just pray for these 466,949 families that are out here that are missing their loved ones and under the age of 18. Oh my goodness. So what type of missing child case is most common? I'm going to read this out to you and then I'm going to go and play some more music and we're going to come back and talk some more about it y'all because this is really deep and you know I ain't going to lie for me it took Dominique's case to really wake my eyes up Um, whenever his um, mom reached out to me. It it took that case to wake me up to this because I'm always, you know, fighting certain causes. And I, I thank God that they did wake me up to this so that I could get the word out. It was no more than God ordering the footsteps of a good person. Amen. Okay, so what type of missing child case is most common? The most frequent types of cases reported to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children are runaways, family abductions, lost, injured, or otherwise missing children. The least frequent cases reported are norm or non family abductions. It is important to assess the risk to each child on an individual case by case basis. A child missing under any circumstances may be at risk of harm or exploitation. And I want to tell you, the longer that a child is missing, the worse the case could get, actually. Um, that was one thing that concerned me about Dominique's case is that he was missing at the time when I got the word he was already missing for two weeks. So that was really concerning me right there. You know, but like I said, let's continue to pray for the family throughout this broadcast. And if the family is listening, I just want to encourage you and let you know that everything is going to be all right. And I'm going to play this song right here, especially for the family. Everything is going to be all right because it really is what looks really bad right now and feels bad now. God is able to heal all He's able to heal all, everything from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, including your little heart. He is able to mend it back together. It will take time. And y'all, let's just, like I said, continue to pray for this family. All right, y'all, you're listening to UGA Gospel Storm in the Midnight Love Garden with Miss Coco Bowden. I know, I know it will be alright. Everything, everything is gonna, gonna be, be alright. All right. I know, I know, I know it will be alright right. when he comes. There was a woman in the Bible days She had been sick and she began to pray And she heard that Jesus was passing by And she decided to give him a try And that's when she said When 